young people are the future of tomorrow and we need to really pay attention to that. Better facilities and technology in the schools to, to improve the math and the science. And we need more industries to be created. Well, with new industries, we'll have more jobs created for all of our young people. Our children are today. They, if we don't treat them right today, they will not be there in the future to take care of us. And I want to be able to see you have access to computer labs in your school. Both chief Both chief. Thank you once again for joining me on this program. I look forward to having a discussion with you on our topics for today. It's always great to, to be part of your living room and, and to hear your, your voice on the phone talking with me on what you see our vision for Ghana, what it should be, what are the critical issues of today that you are dealing with that needs to be resolved around our nation and how could we work together for a better country. This week also, our political entity aligned ourselves with the joint opposition grouping that you've heard about uh, for quite a while. We believe one in national unity, and when we launched our uh, political movement, we said that the only way for Guyana to, to work, to Guyana to develop itself, for Guyana to be a country that moves forward, we have to have national unity in our country. And we have asked for all political entities, even the PPP, that we've got to come together in order to make Guyana a better place. And so our political entity, the Guyana People's Partnership, has aligned ourselves with the coalition. We will be going and forward in our discussions on how we uh, integrate, what are the components of uh, the final campaign, and why this campaign is so important to you, the voters, and me as a voter, because we all want that same dream, I call it the Guyanese dream. We want the same Guyanese dream. We want a nation that believes in itself, a nation that comes together for the good of all Guyanese. We don't need a political party or a president or a cabinet that only aligns itself with one part of the population. We've got to come together regardless of race, regardless of a color of our hair, regardless of a texture of our skin, the texture of her hair, the color of her skin, we've got to come together to make this nation a better place starting now. We have allowed Guyana too long to be divided. We have allowed Guyana too long to have been divided by the political entities of the past. What I'm very impressed with today, even the PNC, who have had power 28 years, the PVP now have power for 20 years, you know, you have to commend parties such as the PNC who have seen what their administration was like 28 years of their ruling to the 20 years of the PPP. And even they have realized that they cannot go forward the same way of the past. So they have opened up their doors. They have opened up their thoughts and ideas. And they have allowed the integration of all of us to be part of what we call now this national unity movement. And I really believe it's something that all of us must get excited about. This is the opportunity for everything we have complained about for the last 20 years or 15 years or five years, the last year, to make it better. Why would it make it better? Because we have come together politically? No, because you and I are going to work together to make that difference. And leadership, if leadership can show national unity, I think our people will also show national unity. In addition, this week, we released our blueprint. We have talked about components of that blueprint on past programs. We released a blueprint that's titled A Transport-Led Economy, An Energy-Driven Economy, A Vision of Growth for Guyana. And going back just to the national unity, also this week, the former Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Mr. Viber de Souza, well-respected man around this country. You know, I've traveled to many, many interior um, areas in the hinterlands, and the, the respect that Mr. de Souza brought to the table as a Minister of, of Amerindian Affairs under Dr. Jagan and subsequently three other presidents was very, very um, credible. He also was recently the president, uh, Jack Dio, announced a national award for the minister for his service to this nation. And the minister who has continued 
his fight for the rights of all people in Guyana, and especially those in the hinterland and the Amerindian affairs, has partnered with us to continue addressing those issues, addressing you know, the national unity approach that we all have uh, signed on to. And it's good to see people from other parts of Guyana, other political um, directions, and the minister was part of the civic, part of the PPP in the early days, that he too can see that we have to work together for a better Guyana. And, and I applaud him because that is boldness. And, you know, as I look at the blogs and look at some of the the inputs that we have seen come out of Guyana internationally, the minister made the right move to say that he is continuing to fight with the people, with the people, not for the people, but with the people, you know, especially those in, in the hinterland areas that needs the same level of service, the same level of amenities, the same opportunities that we may have in the city or in the urban areas, they need it there. The minister I know is an Arawak Indian, and he's from Santa Rosa. And one of the things that we have in our blueprint, and one of the things that, that I know the minister has been pushing for, is a university campus in Region 1. You know, why should all of those folks, brilliant, brilliant young people of the hinterland, have to come to Georgetown, get a scholarship potentially to go to university, but they've got to come out of their environment. They've got to learn the new city rules. They've got to change culture. They've got to live away from their family. When you've got thousands of young people right there in those regions that should have a university campus. And I applaud Mr. D'Souza for standing up and says that are, those are the things that need to happen today. So part of our blueprint that we launch uh, involves a national unity government, in, involves the transport-led economy, involves an energy-driven economy, because what is it we want in our lives? Bread and butter. You know, we can hear politicians talk all they want about all the promises. You know, we're dealing with other issues in Ghana. We need constitutional change. You know, we need to deal with the crime and security. We need to do, deal with the drug um, issue that is starting to get bigger than a lot of us imagine. But also we've got to deal with the economic situation and how do we create those opportunities at the local village level. That's what you need and I need to understand. And that's where our blueprint focus. You know, a lot of folks says, well, you know, some of us don't need a lot of things in society. That's great. I know that. You know, but a lot of us didn't get where we're at today because we suddenly got money or we inherited money. You know, I tell people my life story. I was a young child growing up in the Escriba Coast in the Pomeroon as a missionary kid. Five of us, I can tell you. My mom beat one egg to feed a lot of us. We picked the daisy in the yard to make the tea. We had the outside toilet. You know, we had the newspaper as, as our toilet paper. You know, we brushed our teeth with black, black sage at that time. So, you know, when I travel around Guyana, I see poverty still exists. It haunts me because I want to see that same opportunity that I've been able to come from a very poor family in order to see what I've achieved and why can't all of us in Guyana achieve that same dream. Why do we have to leave our country to get it? We are proposing this economic vision for a better nation. And let me explain to you what the transport-led economy looks like. When you see movies, for those who haven't traveled, you see these nice big roads, you see the big deep water harbors, you see a lot of movement, airplane, traffic, you know, you'll get excited about movies and, and the big buildings and all those things in, in, in modern society. Well, Guyana is very strategically located at the tip of South America. We are the only English-speaking country in South America. We're the largest of the CARICOM nations, um, which we really don't fit with CARICOM, but we can be a service to CARICOM. We uh, borders northern Brazil. We bordered eastern Venezuela, Suriname. Those two areas, especially northern Brazil and eastern Venezuela, need transportation. They are developing their, their um, agriculture industries in northern Brazil. They've got to drive, I think it's three, four days to get to water. If they drive through Guyana, it's less than 24 hours. 
So why do we need to become a transport-led economy? That is what that one road to Brazil will do for us. As I mentioned before, that one road, as it comes through uh, uh, Lethem, it must go through Linden. And I want to be one of the few that, that makes this statement. There's a report from reliable sources that says that a new feasibility study is being done, commissioned by the government, and potentially the road to, from Brazil from, to Lethem to Georgetown or, or Perica, which we have proposed, will bypass Linden. If that is so, I want all of us to ask. Anytime you see a government official, make sure you ask them directly, is that road bypassing Linden? It shouldn't. Linden is a critical hub to the development of our country. Manufacturing hub that needs to happen in Region 10. So going back to that road from Brazil uh, to Georgetown, what happens? 4,000 trucks a week then comes through our nation. What would 4,000 trucks do to you and me? And where would those trucks grow? We propose, in, as part of that transport-led economy, to build a deep water harbor, the mouth of the Essequibo River, so that Perica then becomes that major um, hub for infrastructure development. So as you build the road now from Lethem through Linden, you get to Tamari, you then cut across Tamari over the Demara River, which is 0.25 miles, which is not difficult to build a bridge. Then you cut across West Demerara to Perica. Now what you have just technically done is open a whole new area of West Demerara where it's higher ground. We can start moving some of our major industries. Those big trucks don't have to come through Georgetown anymore. You know how upset you get when you're sitting in a minibus or a taxi going up the East Bank or the East Coast Road and you see these large tractor trailer trucks in front of you breaking up the roads. We've got to look at our transportation system much different than we are today. The government proposed building the Deepwater Harbor in, in Barbies. Imagine all those trucks transversing through the major urban areas. That doesn't make sense. That's why we said cut across to Mary, to Perica, and then work towards that Deepwater Harbor. But let me get back to what 4,000 trucks a week does for a nation. When you build a road, you have exits off the road across down the Lethem's Trail. Every exit, a village or a town is created. Mechanic shops, hotels, restaurants, large industries. Look at the mining industries today. None of those companies that are t digging for our goal that just said they got billions of dollars worth of gold finds builds their headquarters in Guyana. Those headquarters are in Toronto, in, in Australia. Even the oil companies don't have any of their headquarters here. We want to tell them if you're going to come to our country and you're going to develop and, and be part of our resource extraction, we want to see job opportunities created more for our people. We want you to have your headquarters here. And that's why we want to open up that West Demerara area so that that gives us more jobs. So you're not just looking at driving minibus for the rest of your life or pumping gas or working at a retail store on Regent Street making under thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars $35,000. You want to be able to have higher paid jobs. None of those companies that struck gold or are going to strike oil will pay a truck driver in, in Canada $40,000 a month. I can tell you a truck driver makes over $20 an hour U.S., that's $4,000 an hour, eight, thousand, eight hours a day. That's 32,000 Guyana dollars a day that a truck driver working for the same Repsol, working for the same Omai in any other part of the world would make. So why when they come to Guyana, they pay us $40,000 when they're extracting our gold, sending it out for billions of dollars. We've got to change the level of our thinking in our nation. We've got to realize that this is our country We've got to have better policy, better management. That's why we believe in this national unity government. The fact that we've got to put qualified people running the nation. You know, I would never have negotiated a deal such as that. Because if you see me on the road, and I was someone responsible for negotiating a deal that brings these foreign companies in our country, but let, us, let them pay you not even what they pay an hour wage in other parts of the world, I would have done a disservice to our nation. And I can't do that. I can't look in your eyes 
and do that. So that transport-led economy becomes an important factor in our future development. And we need to do that today. We need to start the road to Brazil by the end of 2011. We are in government by October, November. That road ought to start by December. The, the, the feasibility studies have been done many times. We The financing is not uh, difficult to get. There's what we call bill, own, operate, and transfer um, a concept. You get private companies to bill. They own it for a while. They are able to charge tolls. They're able to make their money back. Then they transfer it back to the government, who then is responsible for the maintenance of the roads in, in, in a modern environment. The Deepwater Harbor, with the Deepwater Harbor, the mouth of the Esquibo, you think those cruise ships that go to Trinidad and Barbados, where do you think they will come in? Because they're, the larger cruise ships now will dock at the Deepwater Harbor. Imagine 4,000 people off of a cruise ship dock off of the harbor at Perica. What they're going to want to do, go up that beautiful Esquibo River, see those beautiful islands, go to the beautiful falls. 4,000 people a week goes to Barbados on cruise ships. Imagine those same people coming to our country. Think of the revenues that you would be getting. Think of what you will do with a new wealth that we deserve. We deserve Guyana natural resources to benefit from it, not other people around the world. We also need, in this transport-led economy, is to create an energy-driven economy. You hear the president recently chastise the union leaders for fighting for the rights of, of the union workers at the, of all places, the Enmore Martyrs uh, Memorial. You know, he wait, wait a minute, Mr. President. We have to fight for the rights of our workers. We have to fight for better pay. We have to fight for more efficient organizations just as, such as Gaisuko. Gaisuko has failed. Sugar around the world, prices have gone down. As you get richer, you don't eat more sugar, but you use more fuel. We have recommended, just like Mr. Lula, President Lula, uh, former president of Brazil when he came to Ghana in 2005, said that we should, he would help us move to ethanol production. We can take the same sugarcane, we can grow millions of more acres of sugarcane and move to ethanol. We don't get rid of sugar workers. Those workers are needed. Get, but guess what? Because they don't have to cut the cane anymore with a cutlass because we don't need to put it we can drive bulldozers or machinery and those same workers become more um, better pay better quality of living not waking up at three o'clock in the morning with a cut glass going and cut sugar cane that's for the old days mr president you need you really need to go because we have seen the ideas have run out by the ppp government we have we have complimented them for what they've done they've done uh, quite a few things for a nation You've got to give them credit, but they have come to the end of their term. They, have, they, have, they don't realize what the next vision for this decade. We are now in a new decade. 2010 to 2030 is a new decade. The world has changed around us. You can't have the same ideas of the past. They did differently than what the PNC administration did. We now believe a national unity government will take this country to the next level. And the next level is this decade that puts the opportunities for all our people back into our, our country. What then are our benefits? As I started the program, I said bread and butter. Bread and butter is more important to us than a lot of things. We've got to reduce the taxes. 16% VAT, you need more money in your pocket to spend. So as we build new economies, transport-led, energy-driven economy, we are reducing taxes at the same time so that you have today more money in your pocket. At the same time, those industries will be bringing in new taxes so the government will not be short of money to spend and not wasted, but to spend wisely in developing our nation. We've also proposed, and I saw the president took a part of our blueprint yesterday and I compliment him, President Jagdio. We, we said we need to build a light rail system along the banks of the East, East, East Bank and East, East Coast to ease the traffic congestion. Light rail systems are going ar around the world. We have proposed that in our blueprint since 2004. So Mr. President, thank you for taking at least one of our ideas. I think it's a good idea that we look at the light rail system. It will ease the, the, the traffic situation today, but we have to then continue this transportation hub 
But as we go back to expanding the Demerara, the West Demerara, what happens then? You start pushing new industries. For example, Hog Island can become where those big companies like Repsol and CGX and OMI oh build their headquarters. They'll have their own island to build their own headquarters, but we want um, qualified people of our own people working in those industries. You want then that, that road to be uh, contracted to local contractors, not the same ones getting the money every time. We need to open up where other Guyanese. There's so many other people in Guyana that can do those same work. Why do we keep giving it to eight people or five people, making them richer and richer? Now those same people that get those, con those contracts are now building housing schemes. You know, they're um, building resorts where even the, the CARICOM leaders were able to go at a private resort. How could a contractor who gets money from our taxpayers then turns around and makes money from the government because he used that money to build his business and his resort? That is wrong. That is wrong. Why I believe the PP government must go? They have lost touch with us, the people. You know, not a single minister, not a single one of them have to get out their car and put gas inside. A lot of them don't go to border market. A lot of them don't shop anymore to see the taxes. When they go out to buy drinks, and they drink a lot, they buy drinks. It's not their money they're spending. When you see them sporting at the rum shops or sporting at, at, at any other parts of Guyana, guess whose money they're spending? Yours and mine. So... A minister car is not bought with the minister's money. It's bought with our taxpayers' money. So when a house lot is given out, the house lot is ours. No one, why then you have to pay $200,000, $500,000, a million dollars for a house lot? Who is getting that money? Mr. Government, Mr. President, Mr. Donald Ramatar, who is a presidential candidate for the PP, said he wants to keep Guyana the same way. Everything is fine. He's going to keep it the same way. You're wrong. Mr. Ramatar, you are wrong. Guyana is a very wealthy country. We want to be able to get the resources. We want to be part of the development. We want wealth for all our citizens. That's what we want in our nation. We don't want to keep Guyana the same way anymore. We want a nation that brings value to his people, that takes care of his people, that looks at crime and security as important, that, that ensures that teachers are paid better, ensure that, that, that those in the hinterland is taken care of, the universities are put in their areas, roads and transportation, ferry service. The minister, a former minister told me, he says, if you just put a, a decent ferry service to Northwest, imagine how many more farmers would be able to get their goods to, to, to markets and more money in their pockets to take care of their family. As I end this program, I want you to remember that national unity is our focus for 2011. We're all coming together to be part of the system that makes better decisions for a nation. All of us, the political parties that have joined together as part of the coalition. I need you to do that also. Those have been supporting us, those have been supporting other parties. We want all of us to come together because we make a commitment, not a promise, a commitment to make Guyana a better place for all of us. Thank you for listening. If you want a copy of our blueprint, call us. It's a vision of growth, a transport-led and energy-driven economy that will make this nation a new nation for this decade. And all of us, the people of Guyana, with pride and patriotism, will be able to benefit from. God bless you. God bless this beautiful Republic of Guyana. Hope for our nation. Peter R. Ramsaru, MBA. Listen to what he has to say through lyrics and music. Sing it, CB. There is hope for our nation, yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. I tell you, there is hope for our nation, yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. 
implement our national anthem. One land of six peoples united and free. Recommit to our Guyanese patriotism. Develop a blueprint for operating in a multi-ethnic society. Our children are our future. Therefore, we must upgrade our battered educational system. We must give our youth an education that is career-oriented, nationalistic, and moral. There is hope for our nation yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. I tell you, there is for our nation, yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. We must build on the unique strengths of the people and the country. Creativity, cultural diversity, natural beauty, and strategic location. To expand the economy into service and knowledge-based activity. Optimize competitiveness of goods and commodity producing sectors. Employ sound financial management to reduce taxes and increase revenues from exports. There is hope for our nation yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. I tell you, there is hope for our nation yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. Develop roads, schools, power, and light, and hospitals. Measure implementation and enforce strict accountability for projects, including environmental protection. Consider a light rail system between major cities. Establish a new public housing program. Develop a modern international airport to serve as a hub for the Caribbean and South America. Move to a coordinated dynamic vision of our future infrastructure in which all of Guyana's region are brought together. There is hope for our nation. Yeah, yeah. To save us from destruction I tell you there is hope for our nation yeah, yeah. To save us from destruction Implement Guyana 21 Encourage competitive industries to build on our strengths of geography, agricultural produce and climate Develop food processing plants Expand exportation of livestock, fruits and other non-traditional crops reduce prices in Guyana, improve the economic framework, develop a positive business climate, and reduce regulatory impediments. There is hope for our nation, yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction. For farmers to develop export markets, attract manufacturing facilities, transportation, and energy investment. Reforming government will enhance individual liberty and allow the other 11 proposals to be more effective. Encourage the involvement of the people in all aspects of society. Government must provide effective, visionary, and inclusive leadership to ensure the elimination of racism. Downsize government and bureaucracies in order to encourage entrepreneurship and develop a free, robust private sector. For our nation, yeah, yeah, to save us from destruction.